It is hard for people today to understand why long ago old people who very often had nothing wouldn't touch a thing like a fairy bush when they needed firing. Today, when we have everything, you know, and believe in nothing, uh, we say, oh, no, well, they're crazy, well, they're crazy, but they weren't, they weren't. They knew that if you did such a thing, there'd be consequences. Now, we might call them simple-minded, we might call them superstitious, or call them what you like, but remember one thing, if they were to root up or cut down a bush like that, they had to do it by hand. Today, you can get a machine. It's all impersonal. You can get a chainsaw and you can have it done vroom, like that. Long ago, you couldn't do that. You had plenty of time to be considering it while you did it and to be thinking about the consequences. And there were consequences to things like that. Let me just give you an example from where I'm living in County Clare. I was told this by a man who saw this for himself. And he wasn't a stupid man, very, very practical man. His brother was a ganger with Clare County Council, a road ganger. And it was in the early 1950s, they had a bit of road to straighten. The road, it was going like that. And now this was near the bottom. So rock, rock all the way. And the road was going like that. And they were asked to straighten it. Now, the reason was, I would think, that the council had a bit of money left over at the end of the season and they wanted to spend it. Because look, at that time, why would you want straightening a road? <laughs> Traffic was light, cars wouldn't be going very fast. There was no big lorries in that area. I think the, maybe, maybe some local landowner was getting a bit of money out of it. I don't know why, but they were straightening the road. And there was a big gang of men, or maybe that was the reason men had to be kept working and they had families to feed. People were poor, think of it, to the 1950s, a very poor time in Ireland. A lot of people emigrating. These men wanted work. Now, his brother, John, was the ganger, a decent man, a man who wouldn't, he wouldn't force anybody to work, but he'd get the work done. Now, the engineer came out, he told them what had to be done and how many yards had to be done per day. No bother. That was going to be done. John was going to see to it. And every so often, the engineer would come to make sure that the width of the road and the level of the road and everything was being followed. And it was. And on and on and on went the work, went the work slowly. Because, like I said, it was all rock. Michael, no, the, bro the other brother, the, his brother, was telling me this. But uh, a day came when Michael and John... They were living in the same house. There were two bachelors, as it happened. They arrived on their bicycles. The gang was there. Work should have been started. But there were the men leaning on their shovels. Nothing happening. And John, the ganger, he says, Men, what's, what's wrong? That. What's that? That. And there, in front of him, a bush. A lone bush. A shkach, as we'll call it. A lone white thorn bush. And he says, well, shift it, men, shift it. Uh-uh, uh-uh. None of them would touch it. And for the obvious reason, that it was a lone bush. Now, Michael said, we knew that too, but the problem was the engineer, he was going to be coming tomorrow. And <laughs> if the engineer came, and if that bit of road wasn't built, well, would we be working the following day? So he said, lads, lads, now you know what we have to do. He was a reasonable man, John, the ganger. And he cajoled them and he talked to them nice, but at the end of all the talk, no, that's a fairy bush. We can't do that. We'll go this side, we'll go that side, but we're not going straight on. And eventually he did what he wouldn't do. He threatened him. He wasn't a man for threats, because remember, they all knew each other. Every one of them knew each other. They were all neighbours. And he said, boys, look, I don't want to lose my job. And I don't want you to lose your jobs. But he's coming tomorrow. And if that bit of road isn't finished, we're all out of a job. So what'll it be? Huh? 
<laughs> what will it be? You know, what he was saying, but he wasn't saying it. I don't want to be the one that will fire you, but somebody will do it. So he picked out two of them and he said, get the cross cut or else. And he picked out, mm -mm, and they did, they did. They got the cross cut and he said, do it. Now much against their will. And the other lads watching them, thinking, are they out of their minds? I suppose he picked out the two men that maybe were weakest of the, the, the crowd of them, because there were some men there that would not do it, even if they were going to lose their job, and even if they had a big family, which some of them had. Hmm? He picked out the two, and he says, lads, start. And the two men, they took up the saw, and everybody there now looking what was going to happen. Michael told me this. And he said they started into the bush. And he said they had only <coughs> two cuts on the back of that bush. And he said, I saw it. I saw it myself. It started to bleed. Now, when I heard the story from him, I thought, as any sane person would, you know, it was the sap. Because the sap of some things would be red or pink. And I said that to him. But he said, no, this flowed down along the, the, the bush itself, three or four inches. That, he says, was blood. And he says, well, holy Christ, he says, they threw the saw from them, <laughs> out, out. It was a wonder somebody there didn't hit, get the head cut off of them. They, well, they threw the saw from them. And he said, do you think that bush, bush was touched after? No way, no way. He said they could lose their jobs. They weren't going to lose their lives. That bush was left. And the road was left. And they told the engineer that. My brother told the engineer that, he said. The road was left. That road went no further. And he said, if you don't believe me, check it for yourself. He told me where it was. The road is grown weeds now, the rest of it that was to be built. Nothing. And the bush is still there. I went and looked at it, and you can still see the mark of the cross cut on the back of the bush. It's still there standing. Most of those men are dead now, oh, naturally, natural causes. But uh, I don't know what happened to the two men that cut it. I forgot to ask Michael that, and I should have asked him that at the time. Did any harm come to those same two men that cut the, or tried to cut the fairy bush? But the fairy bush survived, just like the one at Latoon that they had to put the, the motorway around. And there it is growing to this day and a lot of the other fairy bushes that people have had, uh, tried to destroy, they'll survive. Whereas the people who try to do away with them, uh, do they come to any good end? Usually not. Usually not. The fairies protect their own property no matter what.